Yo, Steel Mills, what's the deal, man? I'm fresh off the clock, man. When I say they drove me brazy today, that is exactly what the fuck them niggas did, man. I love driving, you dig? I've been driving for the past, what, about five years as a line of employment, man. So I've, I've grown accustomed to driving, man. You get a lot of, t you, you get a lot of downtime with driving, to and from locations, man, it really takes a chip off, you know, a, a, a chunk of time off of the day. So I fucks with it. But today I've never been running as ragged as I did at, you know, at my job that I'm at right now. Currently, man, they had me gone. I get in at eight by eight, 20 hours out the door. And I'm just now getting done with my last transport, man. It was full about 425 when I got back, man. So I'm I'm beat. I'm exhausted, man, but we going home, man. But peep game, we got to get into this shit, man. And that's uh, we. I want to talk about this David Benavidez fight versus Bozic, man. Um, uh, I had a lot of mixed feelings about this fight, you know. Um, about how I feel, how I figured it would play out. I figured Bozic would come out on top, and then I figured, you know, well. He's going to come out on top, but he's going to get jobbed on the cards. And um, it's a lot of people who feel like that, that he, you know, he did get a, you know, a, um, you know, a, you know, that David Benavidez got a, you know, a, a give decision. I personally don't feel like that. I think he did, you know, he won the first six rounds or so. He won the first six rounds pretty, you know, pretty, you know, pretty easily. And then around about, you can say the seventh or whatever was um, a bit more competitive. And that's where the, the tide somewhat started to turn. But when you get into the eighth round and from the eighth round on, it was clearly Bozik. But by the time Bozik started really coming on, it was just a little too late, man. But um, I want to talk about what I saw from David Benavidez. And if I'm being real with you, I like what I saw from him, man. Um, I like he's, you know, he's moving his head a little bit better as far as slipping punches and getting under the hooks. Um, his counter punching isn't, you know, is it? It's, it's not really like I, I'm not about to sit here and call him a counter puncher. He's a bit better of a counter puncher than what he previously was. But I think with them having that Canelo fight on the horizon, that's something that they're honing in and him just moving his upper body. That's something that he really decided to he wanted to work on. And I see it. You know what I'm saying? I I, I definitely see the growth. But no fans or buts about it. I, I see the growth. I like how he looked in there, man. But um, I think it's officially time to dial all the way back on the hype surrounding David Benavidez, man. Um, when I look, what I saw on Saturday night, I saw a man who does not have, you know, he's not this Mexican monster that y'all have propagated him up to be. He, he's not, he's not no monster, you dig? And as he grow, as he, if he's going to continue to fight in higher divisions, what he did that worked for him in lower divisions can no longer work for him. And because he, now he's going to have to start cultivating skill. Which I seen him starting to do. I seen that you know some sort of an upside there, as far as ability. I seen it. You dig, and you know, you know I, I don't want to sit here and be dismissive of that. But now what I'm looking at is a dude who couldn't get a 37 year old Vozdik up out of there. And I'm not even tripping that he didn't get the knockout. I'm tripping that he didn't get a knockdown for all of this. You know, just I'm consistently arguing with people that. He's going to go in there. He's going to stop Bo's dick. He's going to do this and that in the third. And I'm asking people, how is he going to do that with a dude, a bigger dude than him when he couldn't do it to a dude that was smaller than him and Caleb Plant? That's a natural 168 pounder. You know, just explain that to me. How can he do that? And nobody could give me an answer. Oh, man, Bo's dick ain't shit. Bo's got it. And I'm like, and I'm, oh, okay, well, have you seen Bo's dick fight before? And a lot of these dudes haven't seen Bo's dick fight. I was just on IB, you know, Nuke's channel, man. Shout out to Nuke. IBFP and shout out to the panelists who was on there and he was asking us yo man who are the top three dudes that Vozdick is beat for y'all to tell me that he's you know that tells y'all he's a monster and I'm like tell me the top three dudes that Benavidez beat that indicates that he's a monster you dig and it's not really no top three that you can get outside his best win is Caleb Plant it's not even close it's not even remotely close. Caleb Plant is his best win. And Caleb Plant was winning that race. It had Caleb Plant had a better gas tank, he wins that fight pretty comfortably. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, the the right was on the wall with me. I'm not about to sit there and count on Demetrius Andre fight, man, because I'm like, Demetrius, nah, bro. He's going to violate that dude. But the right was on the wall with me right then and there in that Caleb Plant fight. I saw, you know, I, I saw his deficiencies. 
I saw his deficiencies and I saw, I, I did, I'm like, I know when you, he gets in there with a quality operator, it's going to be bad business. And it almost turned bad for him in that fight, man. Listen, early on throughout the fight, Vos Dick, I don't give a fuck what nobody is saying, bro. I, I was told that, yo, man, he's taking a dive. To me, when I when someone said when, when someone says take a dive to me, that's saying you about to go in there and just willingly let this nigga knock you out. Not necessarily saying you're gonna lose the fight. And that's maybe that's my fault. Because I when I think you know somebody's taking a dive, I'm literally thinking a dive. Like you diving off the headboard, you dig. You just finna face plant into the fucking canvas and not get up. You dig, not beat the count. But um that's what I was thinking. That's what he was telling me. And I'm like, nah, I man, I, I don't necessarily want to believe that, man. But when you look in when you look at how this man was in the, you know, how he was in the ring, or how he was fighting in the ring, bro. Like, he was pulling his punches. He was pulling his punches. He was peppering. He was peppering, and he would never let nothing go. Never let nothing go. And that was allowed. And maybe that's the reason why David looked so defensively sound. And it wasn't defensively sound. Don't let me, let me get to saying that. But it was, he was moving his upper body a lot better than what he's normally, than what we're normally used to seeing him moving. He was getting to the side of shots. He was getting up under the up under the rounds. You know, I was, I I, I gotta admit that. But maybe that is because Vozik wasn't looking to really put nothing, no, you know, no mustard on them shots, man. Um, early on, he was, you know, David was landing effectively. He was landing the straights, landing the, you know, he was landing the straight shots. You know what I'm saying? His shoe shine, and the crowd go crazy when he does that shit. You dig? He was snapping Vozik's head back or whatever. He was doing good work. He looked like he had been, you know, just he trained for this fight. Or it could be that dude took a dive. I don't know. Either way, you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here like, all right, yeah, you know, just, okay. Okay. And I'm waiting for Vozik. I'm, bro, step into the shots. Step into the shot. Sit down on the shot. Put a hook in his rib cage, bro. Do something. You got to give me something, my man. You, you're killing me right now. You can't win the fight like this. And the biggest takeaway from all this was how this dude never lost his footing. He never did a dance in the ring. He never lost his, you know, the, you know, the, you know, he never lost the, you know, the feeling of his legs. He never lost his balance. He never lost any of that, man. No shot that David Benavidez could hit him with hurt him. It didn't hurt him, man. And then you see how gassed he ended up getting later on down the stretch. And, you know, I just think those are, those are growing pains. You dig as he, you know, as he grows into the division, if he does decide to stay there, he'll acclimate himself into the division and he'll, he'll know, he'll understand his do's and his don'ts. But I, you know, I like, even then it's like, all right, how do you operate there now with some of the elites up there? Because I'm looking at you getting clipped by somebody who's not really looking to step into his shots. Who's not really looking to sit down on the shots, even as you wane on the rope. You know, how do you deal with some of them bigger dudes up there? You know what I'm saying? How do you deal with some of those bigger dudes? You're tired from punching yourself out. What happens when you in there with somebody who's, you know, physically, mentally fatiguing you and physically fatiguing you because they're making you overthink and making you do shit that you're not used to doing, forcing you to use your boxing brain and IQ and you can't necessarily execute. And what happens when someone is physically draining you by punching on you, by smacking on you? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm just looking at a dude who's like, man, you, I, you know, just... You got a little bit more growing to do before you jump up in the, in the you know, in the light heavyweight, man. It would just bo it bothers me that everybody just kept running out the window, uh, jumping out the window, talking about this dude is going, you know, he's talking about cruiserweight, Jim Lampley talking about heavyweight. And I'm like, y'all are out of your minds, bro. And this is how I know people just do not follow the sport. Jim Lampley knows better. Jim Lampley knows better because of how how long he's covered this sport. You know what it is you looking you looking at, and you know good and fucking well that man is not equipped to jump up to no fucking heavyweight. You know that. You know that. All the heavyweights that's coming up, that's, you know, just, you know, by the time, if he did decide to jump up the heavyweight, I highly doubt Anthony Joshua and Shang and Joe Joyce and Parker and Fury and, and Usyk and all them cats would be up there. Uh, but Coley might be up there. Jared Anderson would be up there. Richard Torres would be up there. Joel Aloff would be up there. Frankie Sanchez might be up there. Uh, uh, G. Caviel might be up there. Do y'all see him beating any of those dudes by the time David jumps up the heavyweight if he decide that he wanted to jump up the heavyweight? Hell the fuck no. So I'm not, I don't know what it is you talking about that, you know, this dude, you, no, bro. No, he's not jumping up to no fucking heavyweight. You know that. What are we talking about here? Johnny Fisher, you gonna put him in the ring with Johnny Fisher? No, you're not. 
No, you're not. Lawrence O'Coley, you're going to put him in the ring with Lawrence O'Coley? No, you're, you're not putting him in there with them dudes. It's not happening. Will fucking possibly Jai Pataya be up there by the time? No. You're not putting David in the ring with them dudes because there's nothing that he can do with them. You dig? So when I look at David Benavidez, I looked at a dude who has, you know, some ability, but none to the, I don't think none that's going to carry over into the higher divisions, which is why he was really, you know, once again, he brung up Canelo Alvarez's name, which is why Turkey Alashik, you know, was talking about Bivar, the winner of Bivar and Better Be Evan versus that. He is not looking to fight them dudes. It's easy to say, yeah, I'll fight him, I'll fight him, I'll fight him, I'll fight him, until it's time to actually start making the paperwork to actually go and holler at them dudes. He's not looking to jump up there and fight them cats because he knows where the weight's in. You gonna see, you think David is getting in the ring with, the, no, it's not happening, not with no b -ball. He's not getting in the ring with no better BF. He's not getting in the ring with no better BF. You dig? He does not have the skill set to deal with those two. He can at least press the action with someone like a Bavar, and if his chin holds up, he could possibly make it to the 12th round, but as, 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 as much as this dude gets hit, who's to say that he's going to make it to the 12th round? Vosdick not even sitting down and fully turning over them punches to get you know proper leverage on him had that man's face like puffy, bro. Get that man some Benadryl. Look, you know, just, you, he looked like he was having a breakout. The amount of times some right hands snuck him. And he started countering him effectively in the, like, you know, the, the, the eighth and the ninth round. Consecutive counters. Every time David will overshoot on a lazy jab, he meet him over the top with a right hand. You dig? He's not going up there to fight no Bavar. He's not going up there to fight no Better BF. He's not going up there to fight no Anthony Yard, no goddamn Hutchinson. What I saw from Hutchinson against goddamn Craig Richards, he's not going to deal with that dude. It's not happening. It's not happening. You dig? You better see what you know, someone maybe Ben Whitaker can do with him because he's green. Joshua, maybe Joshua Buatzi or someone of that elk. He's not jumping up there with them wolves, bro. It ain't happening. And the only reason why you, you could possibly say he'd be in a better position with Joshua Buatzi because how inactive he goes. He's not punching up there like Joshua Buatzi. Dan Aziz and man, you maybe Lyndon Arthur, maybe. And that's a strong maybe. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't see no dude. I'm, I'm, let's put this Mexican monster narrative to, 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 to rest. That shit is a myth. That shit is a myth. I did like what I see up there, what I saw from him. I did like it. it did, to me, it showed someone who is trying to cultivate skill set. But I'm not about to sit here and say too little too late. But what I am about to say is I don't see him doing nothing up there with none of them wolves. He's gonna have to wait until a new um a, 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 a new influx of light heavyweights come in before he can even think about being a champion. Cause it's not happening with no, none of them dudes. You're getting tired. Why are you tired, bro? And that's another, even you know, just it's so it, his muscle, that's a, you know, he's really gonna have to work on just muscle memory and what he's just prone to doing that would normally work in a smaller division. That leaping left hook where you're leaving your feet, do that in front of Bavar. Do that in front of better BF, who violently walked Joe Smith Jr. into a right hand. Do that in front of him. <laughs> Watch what that man does to you. He's going to decapitate you, Brody. He's going to decapitate you. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Bro. And now you're talking about motherfucking, you, you know, your hand was hurting and all that. They said the same thing. Canelo said he had, and he has the proof. He has the proof. Yeah, bro. Like, I was fighting with a hand injury. I've been fighting with a hand injury since, like, the Caleb Plant fight. Fight with a hand injury. They had all the smoke for him, man. You lying. Now, I, you know, me personally, I don't think he's going. I don't think Canelo is going to be. I don't see him going double undisputed again. I would love to be wrong, but I don't see him going double undisputed. I don't see him beating uh, uh, Bavar and Better Be. I don't see him beating them dudes. But he did have a hand injury when he fought Better Be. Uh, not Better Be, but Bavar. And he went to, to top rank to holler at Better BF as well. 
Homie had a hand injury. He went and got the surgery to get it handled. Are y'all going to y'all going to give him, a, you know, to extend the same olive branch or extend it to David Benavidez? Or are y'all going to clap at David Benavidez the same way that y'all was clapping at Canelo? You dig what I'm saying? What we saw from Vozdick in there with Better Be It, and I keep saying Better Be It, what we saw from Vozdick in there with Benavidez, I didn't see, you know, immaculate head movement. I didn't really see someone who was looking to counter and capitalize off of the missed shots. I didn't see somebody who, not early on, not early on, not early on. Canelo is looking for those counterpunch opportunities, Brody. I don't know what it is y'all see, but it, it just, and this is what's blowing me. This is what's blowing me. Niggas is on here talking about, oh, man, you, 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 Vosdick beats Canelo. Canelo ain't beating that dude. Canelo ain't beating that dude because David couldn't beat him. Because David couldn't beat a 37-year-old Vosdick, that means Canelo can't do it. News flash: When Can Canelo's first trip up to light heavyweight, he knocked out Sergey Kovalev, a sitting world champion, who was active, fresh off of a tough fight with Yard, but active. Let's not forget. I, I don't even want to, you know, I'm, I don't even want to hold this against Benavidez, but we do got to put it in context. Vosdick went three years inactive, bro. No five. Ooh, hold on, did he retire? What? Was that 2021? Yeah, about three years inactive. He retired for three years. He went and sat down for three years. Now, that's less punishment that your body is getting put through or whatever. But damn, bro, 37 year, a 37-year-old dude who hasn't been active and fighting at world level, you, you, you can't down him? You can't hurt him? I think that's the key word right there. Hurt. Vozdick went out to the club later on that night. You can't get rid of this dude. You can't significant. You can't hurt him. All the amount of body shots you landed, you can't do all of that. He's gonna have to learn how to pace himself. He's gonna have to learn how to pace himself, and, and you know, and, 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 and get better shot selection. But I'm not looking at somebody who would like when I see. I'm not worried about him in front of a Canelo. Fuck no. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. You're gonna use you can you're gonna use your length to an extent, and after that, you're gonna start stepping in behind them shots, looking to shoe shine, shoe shine, land something, land a hook. It looks good. It honestly does. The crowd gets involved. Your hands are active. But what happens when you're getting caught? You know, the shot is getting caught, and, and something is, is getting thrown back in between those shots. What happens when your sleeves, your, your, you know, your jab is getting slipped, slipped to the outside and that left hook is getting planted in your rib cage? All the things that Vosdick didn't do, Canelo was going to do. I'm, I'm kind of convinced that Vosdick was in there for the check, bro. Pulling punches and all that, bro. Why are you in there peppering this dude? Why, why are you in there, you know, pity patting, bro? What, what the fuck? You in there pity patting, man. There is no, and this is one thing that blew me. He was pushing Benavidez off of him the entire fight. When Benavidez would get too close to try to smother him and put that, you know, put all that weight on him, he just effortlessly just throw him. No, get off of me. And I'm talking about ben, to the point Benavidez is getting, you know, he's getting pushed back a foot and a half to two feet. And he did that the entirety of the fight. He did that the entirety of the fight. That is that was kind of alarming to me. That is kind of alarming to me, man. Strength. What is your strength like up there? Your pressure can't put, you know, kind of break down a 37-year-old man. Your pressure isn't causing him to waver and, 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 and lose ground while you gain ground. He's like, no, he's playing his feet and he's pushing you back. How Ugas was doing to Sean Porter. Playing his feet, plant two in his body, push Porter back. <coughs> Pause. I get some drink. I like what I saw in there from Benavidez because I, I saw somebody <clears throat> who's developing skill. But what I saw in there was somebody who's just now starting to develop skill, which could be a you know a problem. And what I also heard was him looking to drop down to 168 pounds if that's what Canelo wants to do. 
because you get a kick out of being the bigger man. You get a kick out of being, play, you know, playing Devo on the block. You get a kick out of that. You know, you like being able to just walk, you know, walk, you know, walk niggas down and play, you know, put your weight on them and 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 and, ha and break them down. Not necessarily due to an accumulation of punishment by way of a shot, but just your presence, your, you know, your massive presence in the ring. Where you're mentally and fatigue, you know, you're mentally and physically fatiguing somebody. That's what you, you know, you like to be in that position. And that's why you keep you keep saying Canelo's name. Canelo, 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 Canelo. Your daddy, your son. Ain't you looking to you? You just want the interim position for the you know the to 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 the challenge for Bavall and Better Bs. You know, one of the, why are you not trying to get in there with them? Ain't you trying to be a champion up there and a, you know a, a two way world champion? You this is these are all your words. You said those words. And now you're going back on them. Which honestly, if we being real, I, I'm glad you are because I want to see look, I want to see Canelo punish you. Because I think that's what's gonna happen, bro. I think that's I think that's what's gonna happen. I'm not. I don't see nobody with no you know nothing that has me like you know. Now, I don't know if Canelo can deal with that. I tell you this, the dudes who was over here super gassing that nigga up, some of my homies, they ain't, they haven't texted me yet. They haven't texted me yet about that fight. Oh, Canelo don't want none of that, bro. He don't want none of that. I got one homeboy in particular, my man Le Lamar Triplett, my twin homie. Man, Canelo don't want none of that, bro. He don't want none of that. He don't want none of that. Benavidez will beat the shit out there, nigga. He don't, Canelo don't want none of that. I've yet to receive a text message from this nigga to this day, uh, as of yet. And he had all the smoke for me on Saturday. And I ain't heard shit from that nigga today, or yesterday, or Saturday night. So I'm still waiting to hear something from him. I won't hear nothing from him because he. I, I think by this time he knows. All right, man. I, I you know just this this dude is fool. He's fool. Isn't it? That, that nigga's a snack pack, man. Stop with the hyperbole of these fighters. Let them earn it. When you look at a fighter, consider all situations in that fight. You dig? In Benavidez's case, he's bigger than all of them. He was bigger than all of them dudes that he fought at 168 pounds. And the fighters that he fought wasn't in a position to, you know, to thwart his momentum because they're not big punchers. I bet you he don't walk Mabili down like that. I bet you he don't walk Carlos Gungura down like that. He don't walk David Morrell down like that. He damn sure ain't walking Canelo Alvarez down like that. You dig what I'm saying? It's a multitude of fighters for, you know, for David Benavidez to go up there and fight. But they don't want to find out. They didn't want to put him in the ring with David Morrell. And he was in a position where he could have beat Morrell off of experience alone. I don't know. I'll get a better gauge of David Morrell, you know, after August. <laughs> But he didn't want to go find out what a lot. They, they, and they didn't want to put him in there. And they didn't want to find out. Because what happens if he does go in there and lose to somebody like a John Ryder, like a Callum Smith, a Billy Joe Saunders? Yeah, they'll put him in there with Darrell. They're not going to put him in there with Morrell. They're comfortable putting him in there with Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant is not a big puncher. And Caleb Plant had already been knocked out. You did consider all situations. With me in the Super Real Matias fight, I was considering all situations. He killed a man in the ring. He's not a weight bully. He's he belongs at 140 pounds. And I watched the dude hit him in the chest. And you know how motherfuckers do them, you know, on sub, you know, uh, 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 um, Sub Zero. He'll throw that ice, you know, that you know that 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 ice pile down on the ground. I think was it Mortal? I was either Mortal Kombat two or three. Throw that ice pile on the ground and motherfucker get to slip in and sliding like that. That's how Matias looked when homeboy hit him in his chest and he flew back into the ropes. And I watched him withstand that and walk dude down and break his will. So I was convinced, yeah, and I'm still convinced that Matias is still a fucking demon up there. I'm damn right. Hell yeah, I am. Everybody can't do what Liam just did. Everybody can't do what Liam just did. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm, you know, just when you, when you, when you want to sit here and call something, you know, 
adopt these nicknames for individuals and tell them that they this and tell them that they that. And, you know, just, you know, just, you know, put these false pretenses on them when they haven't necessarily earned it. You dig? Like telling David Benavidez he's going to beat the shit out of Dimitri Bavar or he he's going to beat the shit out of Artur Betterbees and he's going to beat the shit out of fucking, he's going to jump up to Cruiserweight and beat Zerto. I don't even think he'd have beat, he wouldn't have beat Zerto at 75 or 68. He wouldn't have beat Zerto up there. No, bro. I, the fuck no. So I need y'all to really get a little bit more responsible with who you want to knight as, whatever it is you want to knight them as. You want to knight them as a knight in shining armor, a king, a monster slayer, or whatever. Make sure you have all the facts straight before you do that. David Benavidez is, is not the Mexican monster, dog. He's just not. We're going to say that for Gayu. We're going to say that for Canelo. Bam. Those are the Mexican monsters. Those are Mexican monsters. <laughs> not David Benavidez. Sorry, not sorry, man. The dude is a good fighter. He's a good fighter. I like what I saw. But we can, the, the, the hype stops now. The hype stops now. Maybe he can cultivate what it is he needs to cultivate and be successful at 175 pounds. But let's see him do that first. You dig what I'm saying? Not pounce on no goddamn... David Lemieux. I, no, bro. Fuck no. No. I don't want to see him pounce on David Lemieux, bro. I, I know. Let's stop playing games. I don't want to see him pounce on J. Leon Love. I don't want to see that shit. Those were good development fights for him, but he'd already been a champion by that time. And you know, just what what that those, you know, what what, what, what the, the, I'll take that. I'll take that. But by the time we start getting to the rail, and by the, it really started with David Lemieux. I'll never forget that. It started with David Lemieux. Oh, shit, David Lemieux, man. Canelo better stay away from Kevin, uh, from David Benavidez. Oh, shit, look at how he did David Lemieux. Never mind, Golovkin did that to him years ago. And y'all can gas him on what he did to David Lemieux, but disregard what Canelo did to the dude that beat the ever-living shit out of David Lemieux, took a, took a belt from him. It's, just, it's, sel it's selective praise, it's selective outrage, it's selective everything when it comes to the PBC conglomerate. That's just a fact. So, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I like what I saw from him as far as skill set is concerned, but I'm not, I'm, I, I never thought he was going to be e e Bavar, Better BF, or Canelo. And even if you take those three out of the occasion, even the cat, you know, on the, on the, on the fringe contingent, you know, the, Friends, world level contenders or whatever, man. It's gonna he's gonna have a, a difficult time with them as well, because he just he's just now starting to develop the skill set to be able to deal with them dudes. Not now. Not now. Not now. When you're talking world class level light heavyweights, nah. We not even we don't even need to get to Bavar and better be it. Bozdick was a good acid test. To see where you're at, where you, you know, where you, where you, where you, where you fall in line at, as far as who it is that you can deal with up there. I don't think he'll be Callum Smith. I don't think we, bro, Lyndon Castillo had a seizure when Caleb, when Callum Smith put one of them right hands on him. Let's not act like Benavidez is this is, is is this you know the invincible man when it comes to defense. Let's not act like that. Let's not act like a dude who wasn't fully committing to punches wasn't smacking on that dude just on Saturday. Be selective with the praise and be realistic with it. I saw an upside from him. I definitely did. But that Mexican monster, that Mexican monster myth gets that that shit should be flatline right now. Flatline, dead meat, dead fucking meat. Yeah, it just is what it is, man. It is what it is. I don't think that David Benavidez lost the fight, but I did. I do think he should lose that name, lose that myth, lose that entire aura, and let's start anew. You're not moving up to no cruiserweight. You're damn sure not moving up to no heavyweight. 
and you might drop back down from light heavyweight to 168 pounds, unless Canelo Alvarez come holler at you at 75, which I think he will. And man, oh man, deuces.